हेलो एवरी वन एंड वेलकम बैक टू माई प्ले लिस्ट ऑफ पैथोलॉजी मीडियम रॉबिन से जेनेटिक्स का चैप्टर कर रहे हैं टूडे इस टॉपिक इज गोइंग टू बी अ वेरी वेरी हाई ईल्ड टॉपिक बेसिकली विच इज इन यू नो इन कम्बलेटिव सेंस इट इज नॉन एज लाइजोमल स्टोरेज डिजीज एल एस डीज इट्स एक्चुअली अ ग्रुप ऑफ डिसऑर्डर नॉट अ सिंगल डिसऑर्डर सो वी विल हैव टू डिस्कस अ लॉट ऑफ डिफरेंट डिजीज अंडर दिस डोमेन इन हेरिंग सो वट आई एम गोइंग टू डू टू डेज टू बेसिकली इंट्रोड्यूस यू टू द टर्मिनोलॉजी लाइजोमल स्टोरेज डिजीज एल एस डीज सो दैट यू हैव एन आइडिया ऑफ वॉट वी विल टॉक अबाउट इन द अपकमिंग लेक्चर्स ओके ना वॉट इज अ लाइजोजोम लाइजोजोम इज बेसिकली द डाइजेस्टिव सिस्टम ऑफ योर सेल सो इफ यू टॉक अबाउट योर ब्यूटिफुल सेल वी हैव अ न्यूक्लियस एंड देन देर आर सो मेनी अदर ऑर्गेनियल सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल माई mitochondria you know is the power house of your cell it produces atp similarly we have this bag which is known as uh, lysosome it contains a lot of digestive enzymes it contains a lot of hydrolytic enzyme and whatever enters in the cell so for example a bacteria it fuses the phagosome fuses with the lysosome and then lysosome then release a lot of different enzymes and also produces free radicals so that the phagosome which contains the debris of the bacteria that is killed and destroyed so basically this bag of enzyme is what is what we call lysosomes okay so it contains these hydrolytic enzymes and they are involved in breakdown of complex substrates such as sphingolipids such as mucopolysaccharides into soluble products so these are very hard complex products and they are digested by the lysosome now these and this is part of the normal metabolism of the body i'm not talking about any patho pathologic stuff this is all normal uh, physiology these large molecules uh, by saying large molecules we basically here they mean mucopolysaccharides and sphingolipids these large molecules may be derived from the turnover of intracellular organelles that enter the lysosome by autophagy so uh, this is what i was referring to ke um, all this cycle which i just explained is normal physiology so you have a lot of different uh, organelles within the cell they they die there is turnover there is repair so uh, you know as a result of this uh, we 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 get these complex molecules and they have to be taken care there has to be a dust bin there has to be a digestive machinery so they are all dumped into lysosome so that they can be digested right uh, so this is one way lysosome get these complex molecules and the other way could be they may be acquired from outside the cell by phagocytosis right such as bacterial products or some other cells which are neighboring cells which uh, are phagocytosed into the cell and then they are handled by the lysosome now with an inherited lack of lysosomal enzyme catabolism of its substrate remains incomplete obviously and then the degradation products are partial so the complex substrates for example if they follow the normal degradation pathway this is what happens that's the complex molecule and this complex molecule is digested uh, by a set of enzymes and ultimately these simple molecules are produced which can be recycled and released into the cell but if these enzymes are missing for example and these are lysosomal enzymes if they are missing what happens ke jo complex molecules hain they keep on entering into the cell and they start accumulating and this is what we call uh, this is what is basically the lysosomal storage disease they can still take up the big molecules but they cannot actually digest them they cannot actually convert them into smaller molecules so ye kab hoga this will happen when there is lysosome enzyme deficiency okay so this is the broader concept now this is also known as the primary storage stuffed with incompletely digested macromolecules lysosomes become large obviously they are accumulating a lot of uh, complex molecules and they become numerous enough to interfere with the normal cell function now this is baggage in the cell imagine normally a small lysosome in the cell now this is a big one now because lysosomal function is also essential for autophagy impaired autophagy gives rise to secondary storage of autophagic substances such as polyubiquinated proteins and old and effed mitochondria so the whole idea is that you know 
uh, it's not only the complex molecules coming from outside the cell from within the cell organelles degrade uh, and we discussed about the principle of autophagy here okay if this is the cell and this is the mitochondria and that's the lysosome if the mitochondria has to undergo the uh, you know degradation phases it will obviously the products will enter into the lysosome and this is what we call autophagy so this autophagy is also the source of lysosomal storage and this is what we call then secondary storage right now the absence of this quality control mechanism causes accumulation of dysfunctional mitochondria because now the mitochondria the process of autophagy is also disturbed this mitochondria cannot be taken up it's not going in because there are there the enzymatic machinery is not working so now the cell is hanging around with the perhaps a lot of mitochondria which are not normally functioning right so they are dysfunctional mitochondria and therefore there will be uh, ineffective um, metabolism within the cell such as generation of free radicals and the cell um, once you start getting a lot of free radicals and uh, uh, the whole dynamics with the cell change and apoptosis is induced so cell starts dying now look at this statement kitni sari lysosomal storage diseases ab tak reported hai so approximately 60 i think more than that these may result from abnormalities of lysosomal enzymes or proteins which are involved in various substrate degradation endosomal sorting lysosomal membrane integrity so a lot of lysosome contains a lot of enzymes and based on which enzyme is disturbed there are so many diseases lysosomal storage disorder are divided into categories based on biochemical nature of the substrate so for example we will discuss in a minute uh, there is a disease called tay sachs disease tay sachs disease may gangliocide is the molecule which accumulates and it accumulates because the enzyme hexaminidase a which metabolizes or degrades gangliocide this enzyme is missing so if the enzyme is missing this will obviously accumulate within the cell so if gangliocides are accumulated this is what we call tay sachs disease to be very specific gangliocide uh, gm2 so it really depends upon which particular enzyme is lacking what is the accumulating um, complex molecule within the lysosome this is how we categorize them although the combined frequency of lysosomal storage disease is about 1 in 5000 so not too high lysosomal dysfunction may be involved in several more cases so for example an important genetic risk factor for developing parkinson disease is the carrier state for Gaucher disease and virtually all Gaucher disease patients develop Parkinson's so very high yield association there also Neiman pick C is another lysosomal storage disease which is connected to the risk of Alzheimer you see so once your lysosomes are stuffed with complex molecules different diseases are linked with a very important neurodegenerative disorder which is called the Parkinson disease such interconnectedness stem from the multifunctionality of lysosomes so for example lysosomes play critical roles in autophagy and uh, it also lysosomes are important for mediating your immune mediated reactions because uh, whatever bacteria for example are phagocytosed by the cell this phagosome is ultimately linked with the lysosome forming the phagolysosome so uh, the immune system is also dependent on lysosome similarly the membrane repair mechanisms are also involved so lysosome helps in churning out the membrane so lysosome is a multiple yeah, it is something which has uh, you know multitasking type of your team member so because it is involved in a lot of different diseases lysosomal storage diseases do not stand alone in the body they obviously are connected with something else some other pathology so for example do naam mein nahi aapko bataye jo parkinson disease ke sath associated hain then the lysosomal storage disease storage disease are typically fatal we have seen that when diseases one by one are done, so Tay Sachs, for example, the babies die within two to three years of their age. Studies show that several neurodegenerative lysosomal storage diseases also are associated with dysregulation of immune system because we know if lysosome is not working fine, immune system will be disturbed. For example, immunosuppression occurs in Gaucher disease and mucopolysaccharide. We will talk about these disorders when we do them uh, one by one. Despite this complexity, certain features are very common to most of the lysosomal storage diseases and these are as follows. 
Most of them are basically autosomal recessive in transmission pattern. Patient population consisting of infants and young children. Because many of them are very severe and fatal disorders, so many of them just die in the first few years of life. So you will see most of these patients being infants and young adults. And that is also making sense because since the transmission pattern is autosomal recessive, so both the alleles will be affected for a particular enzyme. And if both the alleles are affected, the enzyme is definitely knocked out it's not being so again i'll give the example of tay sac disease where hexoaminidase a is basically almost missing so uh, gangliosides increase in their concentration within the lysosomes right another common feature is that storage of insoluble intermediates in the mononuclear phagocytic system giving rise to hepatosplenomegaly. So obviously once you start getting a lot of insoluble products, uh, your reticular endothelial system has to be activated, right? So in the liver and the spleen, the mononuclear macrophage system gets activated, eating up those big molecules. Frequency and its involvement uh, in most of the lysosomal storage diseases and ultimately leading to neuronal damage. Cellular dysfunction, uh, which is caused not only by storage of undigested material, but also by cascade of secondary events. So, for example, macrophage activation and release of cytokines. So, you know, in true sense, basically the inflammatory environment uh, begins to uh, accumulate within the body. Most of these conditions are very rare and their detailed description is better uh, actually relegated to specialized text and reviews only a few more common ones. As I told you, there are more than 60 plus at least this book claims more than 60 plus lysosomal storage disorders. So all of them are not described here. Only the ones which uh, are very common amongst these rare disorders and the ones for which we know quite a lot of pathogenesis and the details on how the disease progresses. So those are included in this chapter. The first one that we will discuss in the next video will be Tay-Sachs disease. So stay tuned and this is all about the general introduction to a very important topic called lysosomal storage disorders. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the next video very soon.